Hey guys, uh, first of all, thanks for coming here. I know it's Saturday, and uh, as engineers, we burn out a lot. And I believe Saturdays and Sundays are really crucial when talking to engineers because a lot of people in tech they say, "Yar, Sunday to pura Monday ke baare mein sochne ke liye chala jata hai," and Saturday Saturday is the day where you enjoy, right? So. First of all, congratulations to you that you took a step towards learning something new today. So this is actually a great thing, and it will definitely help you progress in your careers. So I'm an audible at the end. Just give me a quick yeah. Okay. So I am Srinivas Shah. I'm working as a software engineer three in some company called Granicus. So we work with multiple governments. Currently, I am working with a uh, US government, and I work in Go Tech domain. right um i have 5 plus years of experience working with web3 companies hf hft platforms d5 platforms and my recent experience have been in deep in companies which is basically a iot section of web3 company um i do full stack i do mobile apps i do cloud i do whatever it takes for startup to function so i'm a hustler and i hope some people of from you are to Uh, is anyone here from startups can you please raise your hands oh wow a lot of them so this is what i do about my hobbies i like talking about anime i like talking about sneakers air jordans and what not and uh, i like music so if you are here to discuss music and all these things i mentioned please come in networking session and have a word with me um yeah so my journey started with my building a first platform called pocketbits dot in so pocket bits is a live website right now and it scaled up to 2 million users or more in my first experience itself they asked me to build the entire exchange i was really scared and like how will i do it eventually i did it i fell in love with react and front end technology and today i'm here to give a talk on signals versus state um i didn't see hands earlier from from people who know signals can you please raise your hands up okay i see pretty less people so what i'm going to do right now is set a difficulty level about my talk uh, because i don't know what experience you have right now so i wanted to know uh, how many people of you have like uh, less than 3 years of experience can you please raise your hand okay um, how many people from canada okay oh you said it's okay you don't need camera okay how many people of you have like more than 3 years of experience Okay, so we'll go in a moderate mode. We won't make it really difficult, neither easy, right? Um, so yeah, today's talk is about a feature called Signals. Most of us are focused on React 19 and the compiler, while it brings some good changes. But uh, we need to know about Signals because it's like shadowed by the compilers right now. So let's get going. Okay, I added this. Uh, I added this for the people who are really new to. JS and stuff like that. I was told that once you come to Pune, you'll see a lot of college crowd. So a little bit background. Uh, since last three years, I haven't. I was in Bangalore and I was giving talks in Bangalore. I was literally craving to come back to my state, Maharashtra, and to give a talk. And this is the first opportunity I got. And this is the first time no one is telling me that you know you need to learn our language. I'm like I'm going to talk in my language if you want to. So yeah, Jai Maharashtra. So. Yeah, uh, moving forward, um, this is a whoa. Okay, so we are going in flashback, and this is my favorite scene from the movie Deadpool. This basically goes back in flashback. So the video. Yep. Okay. Okay, so we'll talk about something called as reactive views. So. why the name react in the first place right um uh, back in the days we had technologies like php asp.net and stuff i am pretty sure there are people who have like 7 8 years of experience and they have worked with these technologies right and it was killing the people who were working with these technologies and they hated for that right? templating is really difficult how many of uh, you have done templating till now can you raise your hand up yeah see the painful faces they have right now <laughs> i i can re really imagine so things like um reactivity when right. it comes to binding right so how many uh, when, when you are learning react you might have seen something called uh, binding so when you write a 
thing inside the input field you can see you can in real time you are able to subscribe to that variable and see the changes on screen whenever you are using the variable on screen that's a basic example of reactivity so we are going to talk about the history how we reached here so initially we started off with a very popular technology called jquery <laughs> i love jquery uh, i mean in my initial days i have worked with jquery a lot so uh, uh, people wanted to come over uh, jquery and the difficulties that they were facing with javascript so they came up with a technology called backbone then it was followed by knockout angular react view and solid i want to keep solid at for the end because it has a lot of things that we want to discuss about reactivity and signals okay so the next slides are a bit overwhelming i would suggest just peep into them don't take it seriously i mean people who can understand the slides good for them but if you don't understand just take a look and uh, just let it go it's all right okay so this is the example of backbone how we got reactivity of changing the input field and this is the type of code we used to write in backbone like many question mark faces over here even i had the thing oh my god do you actually write this amount of code just to change the input field and then subscribe to the variable so you can see there is a function called on name change there is something called as model if you are from angular world you know what model is also if you are from view world you know what the model is right so just uh, if you don't understand any of this just focus on the brackets uh, here we come uh, uh, to a word called observability so if you are a ios developer or a angular developer working with rx you must have known what observability is so backbone was the time when we discovered what what observability is again not invented discovered right discovered is a powerful word because it was there already but backbone got it in, into the picture then we came with knockout and knockout still was difficult but it came up with something called as computed properties and a lot of newbie javascript developers or react developer must be confused about what are these com computed properties so let's say let's say you have a state uh, in that you have a counter right and then if you want to do some operations on counter you don't have a derived state for that you just use a next variable after using next variable you will just do like that state plus 3 if let's say your state is 1 and your plus 3 right you'll get 4 directly without having a derived state so that's some uh, that sort of thing is called computed properties and uh, yeah here you can see in return there's first name and last name but it's from the observe right so i know the code is really difficult but you can just skip it for now it's it's not important i just wanted to show the difficulty that react is easing for us and then angular came up so the goal of angular was not meant for developers actually how many of you know this i don't know but it was meant for designers to write the code and they wanted to write an extension over html templates and if you are working with angular or vue you'll see that most of their logic is inside their templating so this this is something that you must have noticed again you can see a lot of uh, ng model placeholder type and whatnot and then the same curly braces you see in react okay and yeah we the we dom and on demand dirty checks so i want you guys to keep in mind dirty checking we dom and on demand dirty checks this thing in your mind because it will be beneficial for the future so this is how we make it made it super easy imagine that amount of code we wrote in backbone knockout to just do this thing um, and same with same with the input field right we just set the state and then you use it again and again that's how it is okay and then you also came up with proxy, proxy objects how many of you know proxy objects okay most of you most of you are going to fail senior developer interviews for sure <laughs> so yeah proxy objects is one of the important interview questions so. okay um yeah so let's get started with reactivity and let's understand what's reactivity is okay okay so there are two parts of reactivity there's something is called as coarse grained reactivity and there's something called as fine grained reactivity so i'll just read it out for you because i i wrote something garbage and then i have moved it to chat gpt and made this beautiful thing out of it so both react and angular are coarse grained reactive 
meaning that the change in data would trigger a large amount of JavaScript to execute. The framework would eventually reconcile all the changes into UI. This meant that fast changing properties such as animation would cause performance issues. They have all faced this, right? Uh, if you're working with animations, you might have faced this earlier, but let's get going. So hydration, um, let's talk about hydration. Uh, before hydration, we'll talk a little bit about VDOM though. VDOM is virtual DOM in React. A very basic interview answer when someone asks you how React works under the hood. We say, okay, there is virtual DOM. Virtual DOM is a representation of the real DOM. And that's how React is fast. And then when people ask you, hey, but how virtual DOM is fast? And then we are like, oh, it has a diffing algorithm. Hey, what is diffing algorithm? I don't know. <laughs> So, right. Uh, so basically I wanted to give you some background around this. So when you are working with actual DOM, when you are writing HTML and JavaScript, let's say you have a big tree of HTML. So that HTML is converted into document. If you write document in your console, uh, you'll find a lot of things inside that document. So eventually everything is converted into an object. Now object, that object has a lot of properties inside it. So every node, like let's say H1, right? If you want to add some uh, text inside H1, there will be multiple properties to manipulate that. Okay. So when you manipulate the real DOM, what happens is uh, the DOM has to traverse the entire tree just to reach some leaf node inside your entire DOM, right? And that thing is expensive because let's say you have a nested H1 at the end of an ally element, let's say, or maybe something like that. There are millions of elements as a nested H1. Uh, your browser has to traverse to the entire DOM and then find out that H1, then make the changes and then replace that thing. This is something that virtual DOM takes over. It makes a virtual representation of your real DOM and it calculates uh, the necessary um, calculations to make an efficient update to that H1 element. Okay. And that's how your virtual DOM is working. It diffs means differentiates. It, ha it checks between the uh, previous changes and the current change and makes the update in that specific component. And that change is then updated to your real DOM. That's how it is. So virtual DOM is an in-memory DOM, we can say like that. Okay, I hope the concept of virtual DOM is clear. Now, what is this stuff called hydration? Hydration is nothing but when your page is uh, becoming interactive, right? You want some actions to happen. When you, want, uh, when you click on a button, you want the JavaScript to work, right? So giving the power of JavaScript to your HTML is basically hydration. Um, there's something called as reconciliation. Reconciliation is your diffing algorithm. So you must be like, okay, wait a minute. I have never heard of reconciliation. How is it working in React? So when you map over the elements in React.js, right? Let's say you have uh, items in a list. There's, an, uh, there's a prop called key. Nobody knows that what he does, but it is keeping the track of the items inside uh, the list. So let's say if you wanted to ra rank the list in a different way, and if you use index as your key, you know that there's some glitches going to happen, right? It's because React identified each element with an ID. So that ID is taken care by the thing algorithm. It checks the previous states and the current state of that thing. And then there is a states, uh, you know how you states work, right? So I don't need to explain you this. Okay, let's move ahead. Okay. Uh, so basically, if you are interviewing somewhere, you must be knowing closures. Your use state is surprise, surprise, just a closure. So if you see the logic for uh, con state equals to underscore val or init val, the underscore val is not mentioned here because it's a global variable. So this implementation is just a simpler implementation for your use state. Uh, there can be complex answers, but yeah, this is the best thing I thought was uh, good to show. So I came up with this thing. Uh, you can take a picture of this if you want. It's a good interview question. People ask you to implement you state in interviews. Okay, I think people are done. Okay. Um, so coming till here, and this is a very crucial part. Why we discussed hydration, why we discussed reconciliation, and why we discussed the state. So in React, whenever the state changes or the prop change, uh, there's a change in your DOM, right? And how these changes are tracked by React. So as you can see, we have 
a component called main under the app we have a component called buy and we have a component called cart on main i have written there is a state right this thing is called container pattern by the way if you want to search it uh, under the buy there is written that the state is mutated and there is a cart component which says state bound so basically cart component has subscribed to the state buy component is changing the state so what happens in react when you use your u state react searches for the root element of the uh, subscriptions for that state so here the subscription here the state is muted by buy and then the cart item is subscribing to it right so whenever there is a state change occurring in react it re-renders the entire root component so here the root component is main which is the parent and the all the orange components over here are re-rendered so can anyone answer which component needs to be re-rendered over here a basic answer come on it's a very simple thing card right yeah very smart answer right we need to update card i know uh, people will come and say okay we can improve the performance i'll come to it i know a lot of question mark faces here and they want to answer eagerly i get it okay so yeah there's a faster approach than vdom wow and we thought that vdom was the fastest approach and why we thought so is because uh, something called as vue js so vue js came as a gift for both react developers and angular developers vue js is kind of best features of both angular and react vue js operates on virtual dom but has angular like sy syntax so it makes easier for the back end engineers to write front end i've seen a lot of back end engineers doing dumb things with react but with angular it's not the case they are very angular compatible sorry back end engineers okay okay uh, yeah let's come to fine grain reactivity so i'll read out this for you again i did it in chat gpt it's beautiful to read it out you can take a picture of this um the alternate solution to vdom is for fine grain reactivity where state changes only the update uh, sorry only update the part of ui to which the state is bound to the hard part is knowing how to listen to the property changes in a way that has good dx okay so this is a bit confusing right we'll we'll make it a bit clear okay i think people are still taking pictures okay like the sir answered over here what ha what should actually happen on state changes the cart component should be re-rendered re -rendered, right but sir is it actually true should you actually re-render the cart we'll we'll come to it but you got the idea right will will come to it people who know signals the guy over there is last smiling because he knows the answer okay so here's a implementation of signals i have added the implementation because i didn't know what kind of crowd i'm going to get so if it was like you know a very advanced crowd it would have been simpler to explain this but you can take a picture of this um so i want to show you some difference in the implementation over here if you see the getter and the setter right getter now is a function but when you looked at the set state or u state implementation right getter was not a function so i'll go back uh, just take a picture of this and i'll go back to show you what difference just check the function called create signal okay cool let's get back to yeah check the state it says underscore val or init val which means initial values right and if you check the difference now state is our getter and set state set state is our setter okay so the getter is not bound to any function right now it's just a variable it, it is underscore underscore val or in it val okay yeah so if you see the getter it's a function now and it's uh, actually returning the value so this type of function is called as accessor so you can access the value but you cannot manipulate it okay uh, and this is the full implementation again you, if you want the slide please dm me i'll share the slides with you i don't mind it okay demo time um i'm going to keep my mic down for a little bit uh, i'll show you some things which are really good with uh, signals versus state uh, i wanted to show the implementation because i wanted to you guys to understand what is fine green reactivity by the experience and just not by the slides okay
All right. So we are just going to take an example of a simple counter component. Uh, as the code shows, uh, the counter has increment count, and when we uh, when you see the uh, view here at the bottom, I think you can see the bottom right. It says zero with a button. When you click on zero, it will just increment the count, and this is how the logic looks like for the counter. Simply, right? Um, and same will happen with solid. But I'll show you a difference first. Okay, so I'll try and implement uh, increment first. Okay, you see uh, how many times your component re-enter. The amount of times I click the button. Correct. Uh, let's see whether it happens with the. Oops. I think we have to control that. Oh, no, it works. Okay. Um. Okay, right to console log here. Okay, you can see the counter on the top. I'll increment the counter and check what happens. The surprising thing: why isn't a React keeps re-rendering again and again? Why isn't it console logging again and again? As you can see, the only difference we have over here is the function. Earlier we were using create state. Here we are using a function called create segment, which is coming from SolidJS. Um, guys, just a disclaimer that signals are part of many frameworks. Okay. Signals are part of UJS. Signals are part of Swell. Signals are part of Preact, which is Prettier React. Um, there are multiple frameworks out there using signals, but the implementation is done by two people. I want to pay respects to them. So the first guy I'm going to talk is the guy called Ryan Carniato. Ryan Carniato uh, is the founder of Solid JS, and there's one guy called Mishko Hevri. Mishko Hevri is the creator of Angular. And uh, yeah, like everyone else, like us React developers, even he thought Angular was trash. Just joking. <laughs> uh, Mishko Hebri, yeah. So these guys actually created the signals, and uh, there are multiple implementations of signals. This is the primary one which I like. Uh, we are going to discuss the pitfalls and the advantages of using signals with Solid JS and Solid JS only. But if you want to have it in your use case for your business, or maybe or learning purposes, come have a chat with me while networking. We'll definitely figure this out. All right. Okay. So we saw that uh, when when changing the state, uh, we are not actually re-rendering the entire component. So most of you guys are curious. I see what's happening inside the uh, inside under the hood, right? So let's unmask the beast. So the the fine grain reactivity means. You won't believe what's actually happening. This is really like a magic. Can you see on line 13? There's a, a curly brace inside which we are calling count function, right? Like we mentioned earlier, we were just seeing the getter. Getter was actually accessing the function, which was accessor, right? And uh, now we are using count function counter. So surprisingly, only the count function is changing. Yes, you heard it right. Only the count function and line 13 is changing. Nothing else. Nothing else. And that is fine grained reactivity. And that's where the where it shines. Because someone was uh, looking at me with the face of bro, you can change the performance of React. Definitely you can. So we'll come back to the React world. Boom. Okay. Um, how many of you can answer? Let's say your state, there's a component that is not entirely dependent on your state. What do you do to avoid re-renders? Very basic interview question. First interview question. Yes, ma'am. Memoization, right? And what memoization does under the hood is basically the diffing, correct? It does the shallow comparison of the current state and previous state, checks the props, right? Is that a big work? Um, you know, a lot of YouTube videos, when you watch them, they recommend not using React memo at most of the places because it's still based upon memory, right? So you see React and virtual DOM comes, comes with this flaw and 
again we can turn it into advantage in future a lot of what i say has a future tense to it so don't just jump, jump to conclusion and have those eyes hey you're saying something wrong i can see those eyes okay so so when you re render any item inside the component like we uh, like we saw in the earlier uh, let me just yeah like we saw in this slide the main component that's holding your state and then passing it as props it re renders so there are two unnecessary re renders over here products and navigation is it supposed to be re rendered no not at all because it's not consuming your state what you want to do ideally is have react dot you know and this will get worse you know when will this get worse when you have some properties that are using use memo <laughs> so and then you pass it right again uh, both use memo and react dot memo will be using a lot of your memory on scale again on scale not for your smaller to do list apps it won't okay um so coming back to our example so this was the first thing that we discussed that uh, signals do fine grain reactivity and we proved it with a console log okay uh, but shri what more can we do with signals this is just an update and i do not want to break my entire production code just to have this signals running on my computer because it's cool i get it let's let's try something new okay so what i'm going to do is now i'm going to comment out the create signal function over here cool um in react can you use your set state and use state outside of your function yeah, you can answer loudly i know you guys are hungry but please have some voice in your mouth say yes or no louder i can so i can hear you can you use your use state and set state outside the function no right okay should it be okay to use set state or use state outside the function you don't know we never tried it right so we'll just test it, test it out okay so so i have done nothing but i have migrated some code from the main.psx to store.px where i am importing create signal from solid js uh, and then using count and set count here and then exporting it right but this is so weird right we generally do it with just the redux logic why are we using it for and uh, it's so weird that you actually doubt will it work and it's such a good magic right but it should work so let me just refresh works okay i think so that yes yeah and now if i see it's working isn't it magic so imagine a situation where you want to share state between multiple components and uh, you opt out of uh, use state and the use hooks any of hooks and then you opt into redux world uh, how many of you have used redux can you please raise your hand okay how many of you have used mobx mobx okay is the experience there okay so i personally use something called as zustan so it's zustan and uh, we like zustan a lot so if you are still in the shitty redux world please migrate from redux to using zustan it will improve your developer experience a lot um hopefully i'll have a talk about zustan and redux comparing both of the performances but that should be in react mumbai somewhere near okay. cool so we prove that we can use states outside of the component now and the okay there are so many good things about signals but it comes at a cost right like we know a lot of good things like uh, my brother is into gym we talk about steroids and he's like you know it gives you instant instant bulk up but that comes up with a caveat that it's not good for you right um similarly we have a story with signals um and the problem is with uh, the learning curve and the dx so like here in uh, line 13 we have seen there is a curly brace showing count function right 
so what happens is basically we are not subscribing to a variable we are actually using the accessor that returns the variable we saw the implementation a while ago right and that is the problem so there is something called as destructuring so when you actually destructure the value out of that variable which we use a lot in react you lose the reactivity in solid js or in signals and that's the big problem because we as react developers or javascript developers we love to destructure things a lot so that is something that uh, we should know about it and again um, when you want to actually do the prop drilling when you want to share the state with the child component you have to be very cautious because in child components you write have to write another function to subscribe uh, to props so basically when you have a prop called uh, let's say count right when you want to uh, send it to the child component you send it to the child component and then it is directly accessible inside the props and then you can use it but if you do it with solid js you lose the reactivity you have to write a function that wraps the count and then returns it again to get back the reactivity and that's how it works with solid js so now the question is which framework you should choose if you want to use signals better for your production use cases so i would say like you know i am i am using react since like 5 6 years I have used a class based components i have seen all that pain that you guys are having in your eyes experience engineers and uh, i have realized that you know react is a very dumb way to write your front end code and it makes you feel like a super coder or a super human you feel like you know everything every time i meet any react developer except me i am always talking to them and they feel like they know everything oh this you know you you should do it like this oh you know you should do it like that and when it comes to using the actual javascript you should see the miserable faces that we all have as react developers we don't know how it works so give uh, i want to share a funny experience of my interview and this was like uh, Three to four years ago, someone asked me to create a type ahead search input path, the same input path that you see on Flipkart and Amazon. Uh, when you type something on it, you get five suggestions, and you know it's it's very difficult in React by default, right? And I was very like, you know, oh, bro, ये तो मैं YouTube पे देख के आया हूँ. I'll I'll do it right away. And the only challenge that he gave me was, bro, JavaScript में कर देगा. And at that point, I realized we are such big users as javascript developers so vuejs has entirely changed that for me uh, i use vuejs in my daily life and i wanted to code this people who are good with react are bad with javascript people who are good with javascript are good with vuejs okay um, i am not saying that you know react is shitty or something but react has make it, made your life so easier that you don't know the basics and if you feel like me please go home and work on your javascript skills okay good pep talk let's come back to <laughs> uh, knowing uh, signals more uh, i forgot the slides where slide where i was uh, so okay so one little caveat that we wanted i wanted to discuss so like i said uh, you know on every re-render the react will rebuild the entire component from the scratch wherever the states are um how many of you have used create react app initially uh, okay let's not raise that sorry yeah so if you see when you load an application with your create react app on the first load you'll see a very uh, a white screen for like 5 milliseconds or something there will be a blank screen and entire thing loads and why that why that happens is because in your uh, react code you see in index.js there is a function called create root so you are loading the entire react app not with the help of html but just the javascript the javascript is creating your website and it's creating the entire reactivity from scratch so what happens is the, in the initial load uh, like we talked about reconciliation and iteration how react react is understanding that you know i need to change only these parts and why dom doesn't understand this is because they have to trace where are the actions so in initial load the react when the react builds will build a tree 
it will check where your on click action is where you need all the reactivity and it will mark those components and in future when you change the state it will only see the state changes in that components clever no so that's how it is but this is a little caveat with signals on the initial load because it wants to understand where your uh, si signals are so it re-renders the entire thing or i would i should say renders the entire thing once and then we have the reactive uh, sorry fine grain reactivity okay let's go ahead pitfalls of signal yeah i think uh, we have discussed the pitfalls developer experience because there's a new learning curve for uh, using signals like uh, how many of you know even kotlin changed their code base to something similar like jsx and now you can write the android code to become similar like jsx even when you are using swift ui if you are from ios world i am from ios world so um, we use uh, some uh, some similar syntax like react to build swift ui so nowadays because of this uh, dumb friendly uh, framework or let's say library people are more need towards having a, a similar user experience like react and that's killing us okay let's let's go ahead advantages like i said no useless re-renders on any other components you don't have to track what other components are re-rendering when you are actually using signals and no need to add react.memo or use memo i mean you can have still have performance things uh, going on in the signals world but it takes a lot of your shoulder so i worked in a company called mudrex and uh, we scaled up to like 4 to 5 million users as i told i have experience in working for crypto exchanges and it was a crypto platform um, at certain point we realized that our components are re-rendering more than usual and um, like i said it was like my first or second year of experience and i was fairly good with react but i didn't have any knowledge about the performance improvements the first time i saw profiler uh, chrome tool i was shocked by the latency that i saw and then i worked my way by practicing all these things and then i checked again and there were so many used memos waste just lying over there and because of uh, memos uh, sorry react.memo not used memo because of those memos we were uh, losing a lot of memory and stuff like that so yeah again profiler is something that you need to check if you are moving towards a senior developer role. okay that's an end that will end my topic over here you can scan this qr code to get my entire identity linkedin twitter whatnot if you have any doubts regarding your career goals or something like that if you are a company who is looking for a consultant to make their platform fast and if you want to build it from scratch, please reach out to me in the networking time. Thank you all. Thanks a lot.